welcome. Hi, I am Sujay, Dr. Sujay, Ambassador Sujay, and you're on Live with Sujay. We welcome you. We're excited about having you. Excited, ignited, and delighted. So we say we're all the way live and in living color. This is our series on Black Women Leaders, and I am so excited to have with us today, Sean Atkins. Welcome to the studio. Thank you so much for having me today. Oh, it's a pleasure. So now you're from New York and New Jersey, but you're out in the Hamptons with me this weekend. Oh, and it's an honor. So you, now you're a pastor, you're an activist for women, you are a legacy leader, you are a mother, and recently a widow. Yes. So if you don't mind, we want to talk about your public life, and we'll talk a little bit about your private life, and what makes you tick. So as a public life person, you're a pastor of a church, Antioch Baptist Church in Harlem, New York. Absolutely, and we decree and declare we are the fastest growing churches in New York City. I love it, I love it. And what's unique about you, you are the first father-daughter succession that I've ever met. Your father, the late Dr. Al Floyd Austin, mm -hmm. I was a friend of mine and colleague of mine, and then he told me about this daughter, Sean, and now you are the pastor following your father's footsteps. Talk to us. You're following your father's footsteps in terms of God, but also your father, your earthly father. What does it feel like to be pastor following your father? Well, you know, my father was very innovative. And, you know, I believe that a lot of things he allowed God to just download into his spirit. And so when I um, first, when the church voted me in, mm -hmm. quote, unquote, he did it on a Sunday morning. Wow. And he knew how to... Um, share the vision and make the vision so clear that people would would buy into the vision and mm -hmm. and so he just shared some things with with the congregation about me becoming the pastor, um, his successor. Wow! And amazing, everyone agreed. Everyone voted unanimously. That and what year was this? That was in oh my goodness, two thousand five. So people don't understand how important that was because the, the plane hasn't been very plain for women to enter. But here you have a father who was savvy, strategic, yeah. visionary. And he said, I know my people and I know these are the people that need this leader. And this is the leader who needs these people yes. and made it work. So a story about your dad, he used to sell, he was a great caterer, a great cook. And he used to sell spare ribs at the park where I grew up playing. And when I became a pastor, I used to support him. And that's how we connected before I even met you. But he was just such a generous spirit. And I see that in you. So talk to me about legacy because you have his DNA, but you also have his generous spirit. So talk to us about legacy. How important is that? Well, let me tell you, one of the things about my father, he was far beyond his time. He surely was. Especially when it came to legacy. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, maybe I was a teenager when he taught me about investing. My goodness. And um, just really having something, investing in the stock market yes. and things like that. Yes. And so, you know, he was the one who brought me my first stock. Oh, my gosh. That, and, yeah, and just, my dad, and, too. And introduced to me the right people, connected me to the right people. And even with my children, he started both of my children off with $25,000 in the stock market. And oh, my goodness. I'm telling you. Visionary just, also because he had a child care daycare center. Mm -hmm. He had a catering business and a church across the street from what people would call the housing projects. But he said the projects aren't going to be in you. Absolutely. Exactly. So it's about how you see and how you connect. That we're Let connected. me tell you about this. So, you know, when we, that was an AMP, an old AMP dilapidated supermarket. Oh my gosh. And I remember my dad coming past that, that building mm -hmm. and looking at it. We used to shop in that supermarket. And now you are and, shopping in another way. he looked at it and he, he, he started crying. He said, it's mine. It's mine. Oh my goodness. And the guy, the auto parts store owner, he said, what's yours? He said, that building is mine. Oh my goodness. And he's like, you know, it's mine. God's given this to me. And the man said, How much money you have? He says, Nothing. Wow. wow. <laughs> and, he, and he said, But it's mine. And you know, he had vision. Mm -hmm. he, he wanted to leave something yeah. for the next generation. Yeah, exactly. And that's how he started the our um child care center. And so many generations have been blessed because of that. A book that I was sharing with you is called The Circle Maker uh -huh. about Mark Batterson. And he too also talks about vision and claiming what's yours and writing down and making the vision plan for what you want God to have in mm -hmm. your life. So you've done that. You've raised two successful children, one yes. an actress. 
Candice. Candice. And you have a son who's a CPA. Joshua. Graduate of Morehouse College. Oh, yes. Morehouse man. Yes. Yeah, so now a mom raising two uh, young adults uh, in this society. What was different than your being raised in Harlem and raising them in Vauxhall, New Jersey? Well, they were raised in the suburbs, number one. Okay. And there were th different things that were offered to them. For example, sports. Mm -hmm. You know, being involved in Pop Warner. Yes. Um, had, we had a community growing up, but it was really different because the kids got a chance to really go outside, ride their bikes. Yes, yes. They got exposed to different things. And um, and so it was just, but they got the best of both worlds because they were able to come to Harlem. Yes, yes. And enjoy the culture of Harlem. Yes. And then go back home and enjoy their backyard and running around with their friends. Exactly. And I think the word culture, so we've talked about connections, but culture is the other word I want to bring up because you had, had a chance to hang with us here in the Hamptons, and we talked about it being a culture, that we celebrate our culture out here. We recently did a show right in this studio celebrating black culture. Congratulations. On East. Thank you. I'm so excited. So culture, how do you describe the culture of the church, particularly post-COVID, and how do you describe just the culture that we're experiencing in America right now? You know, we're really living in a different time. Yeah. And you really have to be shift with the time. A lot yes. of times, you know, churches and pastors get stuck. Right. And people are not attending church like we used to. And so, right. you know, you, you have... You have to do things all differently. All different streams of, of all, all different types of, of exposure to the gospel. Yeah, yeah. And if the goal is to reach, to spread the gospel throughout the whole nation... Some people might not ever walk into a church, mm -hmm. but they could see you on television and one word that you speak, even now in this broadcast, can mm -hmm. change their life. Yeah, that was Joyce Meyer's success, Bishop T.D. Jakes. Absolutely. Because television revolutionized things very much. But also it's about revenue streams because people used to come and bring their offering <laughs> envelope. And now if you don't come, um, so you have to figure out technology. So is the church without technology dead now? Absolutely. Oh. And, and you know, one of the things that we we took advantage of as soon as COVID hit was, you know, using the different streams of being able to give text to give, Cash App, Zelle. Yes. There's so many different ways, Givelify, yes. that you can give online. And, and what's really interesting is how our seniors, our Golden Saints, they become very savvy with giving online. I love it. It's really the way of life. It's really exactly. the way of now, not it, even the future. It's but, now, yeah. exactly. So you had a president. I, You know, the scriptures talk about your gifts make room before you bring it before great men and women. And so you had a president, one of the presidents I worked for, President Clinton, come and visit your church. Why was he there? Oh, my God. So um, Hillary Clinton was running for president. Okay. And I happened to have breakfast with him that the um, that week. Okay. And so we were just talking. He was thinking about what church he could come and visit, and, and I happened to be sitting by him. So, you know. Oh, that's awesome. That's how it happens. <laughs> and they're frequent out here in the Hamptons. Yeah. They're really popular. They're in East Hampton often, and so we just love them. But I just remember seeing that clip with you, the, the video of you on TV on the major news stations, and I said, look at my girl. She's there. Because I'm a decade ahead of you. Mm -hmm. So even though we're contemporaries and colleagues, but I'm also kind of like a matriarch in this thing. So I just admire what you've done, what you're doing, and how you just really continue to grow, expose yourself and others to so many things. You travel a lot. Mm -hmm. So what's a trip you're taking for personal life, and what's a trip that you're going to take for professional life? Well, first of all, let me say thank you for being a trailblazer. Oh, because you. you're the model to follow. Welcome. But, um, well, I want to just say this. Recently, my husband and I went to um, Europe, mm -hmm. and so that was amazing before he transitioned. Yes. But uh, my children and I are going away on vacation with some friends, and I'm actually looking forward to it. You know, it's so important to rest. Yes, yes. Say that times, again. It's important to, <laughs> to rest. Rest. R-E-S-T. Into, into rest. <laughs> yes. So Aretha said R-E-S-P-E-C-T, uh -huh. but we're saying R-E-S-T-T-T-T. -T -T -T. Yes. Yes, with an exclamation point. And I think let's talk about that because you're going away for S family, but before that you mentioned you and your husband before he passed, which was just a few months mm -hmm. ago. Three, months, Three ago, months ago, you traveled together. So I'm going to talk about the importance of spending quality time with those you love. And then on the other side of it, not only rest time, but what's important for public figures in terms of 
grieving time, mm -hmm. just taking time for you. So what's the importance of spending time with your loved ones, whether it's here in the Hamptons and Europe? Talk about that. You know, you got to maximize every moment mm -hmm. because you know what? You know, time is ticking and none of us know when we're going to leave this earth. Exactly. And so I just made the decision several years ago that we were always going to do a family vacation. Mm -hmm. And I've conditioned my children to think like that. Yes. So when they have their family, we'll spend time as a family. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful and grateful because it was one of the best vacations that we had. And everybody had their cameras out videotaping. Oh, wow. We have so many videos. Wonderful of, memories. Yeah, of my husband. You know, he, yes. was a, he was the life of the party. He was, he was very funny. Mm -hmm. And he was just a pleasure to be around. That's awesome. Well, you know, quality time with him before he left, quality time with your children now, and quality time alone. But also how the world is just full circle. You're meeting your husband and you're having your children. But you used to know the North family, yes. Robert North, Blaine, and Pamela Palanke North. And now, last night, you're in their house out here in the Hamptons. Oh they used to run a program out here for Boys Harbor. Mm -hmm. And you worked with them. Yes. So the world is like full circle, which is a point, never burn the bridges. Absolutely. Last night, I had to tell Dr. North, I said, thank you, because you gave me my first job at 14 years old. I wasn't looking for it. He dropped it on my lap. Wow. And, um, you know, he had a major <coughs> role in my life and shaping me and encouraging me to go to college. Wow. And I'm so thankful and grateful. Saying thank you is also important. Talk about that. You know, it, it's an attitude of gratitude. And, 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 and I have to say this, that there was a time, not that I wasn't thankful, but I didn't think to go back and tell the people that I love how thankful and grateful I am. Mm. And I believe that Thanksgiving is the way that you enlarge your territory. Okay. It's a way where it opens up doors for you when you show people how, how grateful thankful. you are. And yeah. people are ready to receive that. I mean, this generation doesn't know. My parents used to make us write the thank you thank notes. You. With, with the pencil, no card. No, that's right. <laughs> you know, you got to write it and put that stamp on it. But people appreciate it. And my generation still appreciates yes. getting those thank you notes. But on that thank you note, one day I went for a preaching um, interview, for the, a preaching professorship at Harvard. Mm -hmm. And the dean interviewed me, spent the day with me. I didn't get the position, but I sent him a thank you note. And the next year, he calls me up. He says, well, we didn't give you that position, but I got your thank you note. We've got something even better for you. And he created what's called the President's Administrative Fellowship mm -hmm. Program at Harvard. So I come back as an officer, but it came from those two words saying thank, thank you. you in a little note. So I kind of continued. The connections are important. Culture is important. Saying thank you is important. And then collaboration. That's another mm -hmm. C I like to talk about. So we do some things together. And what's the importance now, particularly in this climate, of doing things in partnerships and finding people with whom you can work? How important is collaborating? I think to? it's very important. I believe that you know we're all connected to someone. Yeah. And that's why you've got to be open yes. to be in different circles and environments, to collaborate with one another. Yes. Because that, too, opens up the door. Exactly. And then you see things like you didn't see before. Like you saw to them some curtains I had in a place. You have a similar door. You saw some curtains. You get ideas when you're in new places. Yes. And you give ideas when you're in new places. And it exposes you to um, new ideas, other cultures. Exactly. Um, a new way of thinking. Because, you know, sometimes we can be like this. Oh, very yeah. much like this. My eye big and we can't see with blindness yeah. one. But that's really but what it's diversity... It's exposure. It's an exposure. Yeah. And really what diversity, equity, and inclusion is mm -hmm. all about right now is saying, make sure there's some other people at the table because we all have points of views. They may differ, but there is some common crown and together we can all grow. Can I just say this last night when yes. I was listening to you ladies collaborate around the table? So we have a group, just, a circle of women that hang on the beach together. Amazing women. Oh, we love it. And we're out here in San Carlos. We're two, two and three generations out here. So she got to be part of it. Yeah. Saying what, what was that experience I was intrigued like? by your conversation. And 
iron was sharpening iron, and each one of you had your opinions. Right. <laughs> oh, very opinionated. <laughs> but we bring new information. Yes. One had heard this about a disease that's going around. One knew this. And when we put it all together, we're like, oh, okay, I needed to know that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But the other part of it is we had the discussion at the end of the night, but we also played at the beginning. We went to a play. Absolutely. And the importance, talk about playing. Resting is a portion of it, but talk about playing. Playing has to be a part of it, too, you yeah. know. And, and playing can look, you know, it, playing to me mm -hmm. can be getting out. And um, I like to do things like jet skiing. Oh, yes. I'm yes. very adventurous. I do zip lining. Oh, my um, gosh. I was in Costa Rica. I went through 11 course zip line. Oh, my um, gosh. I, I'm, I like to do things that are different, things that I haven't done before. Yes, yes. And you, you need to play sometimes. Thank you. All work and no play yeah. makes dull boys and girls and women and men. So I wanted to just say this also because this is our play date. Uh -huh. This is an adult play date. Yes. Um, and I'm a big player. I just love to have things that are fun. We talked about comedy clubs. Mm -hmm. So what other things do you So you're a zip liner, you're a jet skier. Uh, what else do you like to do for your play I, I dates? I do horseback riding. I go to the movies, but I just started going to the movies alone. Okay, yeah. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I love it. And for me, it's rest, but play at the same time in a different kind of way, going to the spa. Yes, yes. Okay. Oh, my goodness. And I go every month. Massage, and now they have CBD massages. Our next show is going to have some people who own a cannabis CBD nice. company, and we're going to talk about how you get a massage with CBD oil. But it, all of that's so important for the mind, body, and spirit. So I was on the front lines of 9 11 as mm -hmm. an NYPD chaplain, and so for 60 days, we did nothing but ground zero and identifying bodies. And, and so, about the 60th day, I just fell apart, mm -hmm. and I just was like, I can't handle this. But one of the things I did to balance my life was I started going to comedy clubs. Mm -hmm. And so I like to do comedy routines, but it had to balance that. You can't have all this and none of that. And that's what life balance is all about. So it's work and it's play, it's rest, it's renewal, it's family, it's time alone. It's restoration. Restoration, it's, yeah. innovation, yes. and inspiration. <laughs> so you inspire me. Yeah. And so when, we, when we're inspired, there is time for new innovation. You start thinking new thoughts. What's a dream you have that's close mm -hmm. by, something you always wanted to do, and you're gonna, you know it's going to happen for you? Now, that's a good question. It's a great question. Yeah, I yeah, ask you questions. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, okay. So this is simple. Okay. okay? But um, being a grandmother. Okay. I look forward to being a grandmother. Wow. Okay. In a whole different way. I'm going to expose my kids, my mm -hmm. grandkids. Yes. Um, I'm not going to be the grandmother that's taking care of the child every day. Yeah, I know. I'm not going to be a nanny. They're going to be at <laughs> Wall Street ringing the bell. Your grandkids going to be wait, ringing the wait, bell at Wall Street. Wait, I have one of those bells in my church, by the way. Uh, okay. 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 I can but, see it. I can imagine. But, um, you know, I look forward to being a grandmother and spending time with my grandchildren. That's and awesome. And leaving legacy. That's awesome. So I look forward to my, I have two sons. Mm -hmm. um, I look forward to them having great wives, women in their lives who love them and whom they love. Yes. And to just be able to have a good time together as husband and wife and, you know, partners, mm -hmm. real partnerships. So that's what I look forward to. And, you know, they have a wonderful role. Our children have wonderful role models. They do. They do. And so I believe that it will happen because we've instilled so many values in them. Mm -hmm. and, that, and they're treasures. And they can dig into it. And, and exactly. I think that that it will absolutely manifest for them. And it's evidence because they still want to come home with, you know, or still talk to us for advice. And that is so that special. Is so when precious. I see my phone ring or the text message saying, you know, call me, I need to talk. I'm like, I can do this. I really, you know, really. And I'm like, I'll drop everything for my kids. Uh, what? What? <laughs> what you said. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> what time can I be there? What plane is uh, going out? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So let's talk about uh, being a new widow. Oh my. It's a place you haven't been uh, before. Didn't imagine you'd be. I never dreamed I would be in this place. What advice do you have? And you're still fresh in it. They say you have to go at least a year because you were married how many years? I was married. This would have made my 32nd year. Wow. My, mm -hmm. my condolences and Thank sympathy you. to you. So they say you have to go at least a full year, all the birthdays, all the holidays. But you're fresh in it, three months into it. What would you say for women who are experiencing similarly, the loss of a spouse mm -hmm. 
and then the loss of a parent, which is also mm -hmm. a lot in our generation. What would you say? Get grief counseling. That's the counseling. Say it period, again. Grief counseling is imperative, and a lot of times in our community, you know, people shun grief, mm -hmm. any kind of counseling. Sure. Thing. But I think it's imperative mm -hmm. because you know what? It will come back to haunt you. You know, you can think you're okay, yes, and something can trigger that emotion. And your emotions can be all over the place. All over the place. And even now, because mm -hmm. it's still fresh in me, yes, yes. my emotions can be all over the place. I could be happy one moment, yes. and then the next minute I can find myself tearing. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was in a, a lecture recently because a lot of women don't even deal that you might be menopausal as well as grieving. Absolutely. So your hormones and your body is doing a whole lot right now. So you, grief counseling is, is step number mm -hmm. one. Step number two, take and make time take for yourself. Take time, rest, that rest. Mm -hmm. You know, finding, for me, I told you, I read Viola's book, Finding Me. Viola. Viola Davis. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> I'm finding me. You know, mm -hmm. yes. you, you might have different friends now. There's things that you did as partners. And yes. now, you, as couples, it maybe you know, you have to have different friends because you're not doing the same kinds of things. Yes, yes. But, um, That's an important it, piece. It's important to see what you like. Mm-hmm and what you want. Yes. It's important to process and journal mm -hmm. um, and and think about your goals. And it's important to dream. Thank you. Yes, and, yes, and yes. I have become a dreamer. Okay. I had stopped dreaming. Mm. And started Were you too busy? Or were too you, busy. Too, too busy. busy. Okay. Too busy. Okay. To really take the time, mm -hmm. make the time to dream. Mm -hmm. You know, I have nothing else to do but dream now. Which is interesting because sleeping out here in the Hamptons, I get a great night's sleep. I don't even put any alarms on. And I had to stop dreaming in my sleep. But now my dreams are so pleasant. And I awaken to the sound of birds singing. Yes. You yes. know, and that's a whole nother thing for your body to not jump up, but to just be able to say, good morning. You know, yeah. it's a new day. And so all of those things, getting your new rhythm. I mm -hmm. wrote a book called Rhythms of Rest. Finding what your new rhythm is for this mm -hmm. season of life is also important, too. And I cook. Okay. So, you know, people say, oh, you must eat out. Absolutely not. I cook healthy meals. Nice. I've learned how to cook small portions. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I make it for two days. And, yes. And so that's very helpful. Good. I want to stay in shape. And, yes. And so part of... of of my time of pleasure is exercising. This, so you served in the Army Reserve, so we thank you for your service. Thank you. But was that the beginning of really the boot camp getting your body like you had to run, you had to get it together? Was that the beginning of your whole fitness? Well, I kind of got lazy after I got out of boot camp. Uh, okay. But over the years, you know, turning 50, yes. pushing 60, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, I made up my mind that I didn't want to be on medication ever. Good for you. Ever. Good for okay. you. Mm -hmm. So I am free of medication. Nice. I'm turning 59, mm -hmm. and I want to keep it that way. So because our metabolism changes. Absolutely. And that gut. Yeah. You know, uh, what? It's easy. <laughs> That's to why get. I wear the overflow <laughs> blouses like uh, this. It's easy. Yes. It's easy to get that weight you put on, but it's hard to get off. It really is. It's like, when are you leaving me? <laughs> like, you can gain three pounds, and then you can't lose that one. So it's like interesting time. But your body has muscle memory. Yes, it and does. And so, mm -hmm. you know, from boot camp, my body remembered certain things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I can do push-ups. Yes, yes. Um, you know, sit-ups are effortless. Yes. And so, you know, I, I, I'm enjoying this journey. Yes. Um, it's not, I'm up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Nice. Now, uh, do you have a regular bedtime? That's important, too. I wish I did. Uh, I, I, no. So how many hours sleep do you need? Let me ask it that way. I... Really would love eight hours of sleep. And how many in the real you? world? Okay. Uh, maybe five. Oh no. Oh no. Six. Okay. And 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 the reason why I say that is but I go I, I take power naps. Okay. Okay. And so, so I sleep okay. during, 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 the during the day. day. Okay. So I yeah. have to sleep straight through. I need eight hours. When I'm less than that, I'm irritable. And I'm just kind of a space cadet. So I just said, do your body a favor. So, But I take vacation. And this month, I'm kind of just not putting myself through any routines. Mm -hmm. Just kind of what do you want? What does your body need? And yeah. play a little bit, yeah. which is so important. So for our last question, we're just about time. We've been talking with Sean Atkins, who I am so excited, a mother, an activist, a recent widow, a pastor of Antioch Baptist Church in New York City. But she's out here in the Hamptons visiting us. And my, we're having a play date. Yes. And so we're so excited to have you on Live with Sujay. Last question. I always ask this. 
A plus B plus C equals success. What's your A? What's your B? What's your C? Prayer. Prayer? Is my A. Okay. Plus meditation. Plus meditation. Plus... Hmm. Inspiration. Okay. And there's a re... And you Prayer, know, meditation, I, and, and inspiration. And, and, and it really equals manifestation. Okay, I like that. You heard that. Prayer, inspiration, meditation equals manifestation, meaning that it shall come to pass. Right. It's going to happen. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you see? Being inspired by other people. Yeah, you know, yeah. And putting that prayer to work. Yeah. Well, you inspire me. I mean, your energy is always so on. I'm like, if I need a mama, <laughs> I'm going to come to Antioch Baptist Church. Don't put me up to preach. Let me just sit out there and be with you. But it's an honor to know you. It's an honor to be connected to you. Um to connect to you by yourself, but also to be connected to you through your father, who was my friend. Also recently lost your mother. My condolences Thank for that. You. So you are the matriarch now. You yeah. are the one that's the sage. That and I love it. And I know. I your kids know. come to you. And but, but not only that, my nieces and nephews come yes, to me. And yes. What's really interesting, I was just thinking about this recently. I said, well, I've never told people to call me Auntie Sean. Mm. And even in the church. Everywhere I go, I'm Auntie Sean. My neighbors, I'm Auntie Sean. Isn't that amazing? And so I love being the matriarch. Okay, and, all right. You know, because you know, here I'm here to leave a mark that will never be erased. So my mantra this year is: make your move, make your mark. And make your money. Oh, and on that note, I want you to be know that you were here with us on Live with Sue J. I was here with Sean Atkins. Prayer and inspiration and meditation equal manifestation. Mine is make your mark, make your move, make some money this year. And join us again for Live with Sue J. We're here weekly. It has been my honor. Thank you, LTV. Thank you, all of my crew in there, producers. Thank you for helping us make this show a great success. Michael Clark, our executive director, always great to be in your space. Thank you, and we'll see you again the next time. This is Live with Sujay. See you.